Hello. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. This is the, the uh, next in a series of presentations that I've been doing here at uh, the South Row Senior Center in conjunction with the Council on Aging. Uh, I, I do elder law. That's all I do. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. We have offices kind of up the street here uh, in uh, Westboro and also in Worcester. There are 56 of us, so other people do other things. If they, pretty much we can deal with any problem you've got, but if you've got an elder law problem, kind of that's me. Uh, and the purpose of today's presentation is to talk about dealing with Alzheimer's, because we, we, a lot of the clients that I have are people who are worried about getting Alzheimer's or another disease that's gonna cause dementia, uh, or if they've got it, now what do they do? Um, and so we're really trying to do a series this year that is just kind of focused on those issues. One of my jobs actually as an elder lawyer is to certainly know the, law, the legal piece to that, but it's also to introduce you to the people that you need to know when you're facing these kinds of problems. And that's why today I brought Shelby Marshall with me from Right at Home. Right at Home is a wonderful home care agency also just down the street. They're located in Westboro. They do a lot of work here to talk to you about how home care would fit into all of this. Uh, and Eric Kressler um, from, I'm, I'm always doing that. I'm always, because I'm always thinking that it's from, new, from, it's from, it's from New Horizons, from New Horizons, right? There is, there is a, that's a bad thing when I'm getting, right? Um, there is a, it, from, the, from the memory care unit at New Horizons called Hearthstone. Hearthstone actually is not just at New Horizons, but in a number of assisted living facilities. So we're going to talk about that. Because what we're, what we're trying to deal with today is not folks who have really got early stages of dementia where you're trying to figure out whether there's an issue. At this point, you know there's an issue. Um, you know my friends Frank and Mary. We've talked about them before. Uh, they have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, for today, we're only going to talk about Mary Jr. since she's the daughter who lives around here who may be helpful to, to, to Frank and Mary if they've got an issue. We've always talked about the fact their goal is to die and be buried in the backyard. And then after they've died, to leave whatever they have to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. So it's a pretty familiar kind of basic estate plan. But the issue now is that Mary has, has had Alzheimer's for a while. She's been living at home. Frank's been taking care of her. Now the Alzheimer's is getting really serious. And the question is, so what are her options? Well, I got into this kind of work um, really heavily after my mother died in a nursing home in 1991 and I watched all this play out with her at home with my dad they kind of remind me of Frank and Mary and 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 watching all of the tension that arose as she got more and more anxious and depressed and he got more angry how come you can't remember what does it matter and then finally she ended up in the nursing home now at that time when you were in the later stages of dementia, there really was only one option, and that was the nursing home. And that's kind of changed now, and that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit. Because right now, as far as Mary is concerned, there were really three possible options. One is the nursing home. Uh, one is staying at home, because there are so many more services available at home now, even when you have advanced dementia, and there are government programs to pay for that. Uh, and then there's assisted living. So we're going to talk about all three, because I always talk to folks about the fact that, nope, everybody's goal is to stay at home. And that's great, unless you've gotten to the point where home is no longer safe. And the question is, from Mary's perspective, is home safe anymore, right? And is home the place where she's going to be really able to live the best quality of life that she can live, given the fact that she now has dementia? So first, we're going to talk about the nursing home option. And we're going to talk about Frank and Mary. Once again, Frank and Mary, they own their home. It's worth $300,000. Frank has an IRA worth $200,000. They have joint savings worth $300,000. So they have 
total assets of, uh, of uh, $800,000. They're not rich. They've been okay though. There's no mortgage. They've got total income of $3,000 a month, right? He's getting $1,500 a month from Social Security and $750 from a pension. And Mary's getting half of his or $750 a month from Social Security. So they've been okay. But the question is now in this situation, what's going to happen? Now, typically when clients come in and talk to me about this situation, they're convinced that first of all, Mary, that the only, maybe that the only option is a nursing home. But also they're convinced that they're going to get killed as a result of the fact that they haven't done any advanced planning regarding their assets. So the first thing, uh, the, the, the big take home, which I, if you've been here before, you've heard before, is that in this situation, Frank and Mary will not have to spend down any of their money on a nursing home if Frank needs, if, or excuse me, if Mary needs nursing home care. Now, in, in order to understand that, by the way, you, you, and, and to understand some of the other things that we're talking about, I just want to introduce one other term, the activities of daily living, the ADLs. And you say to yourself, well, what's an ADL? Activity of daily living, that's everything I do in a day, right? Well, yes, but there are some specific ones that for purposes of these kinds of programs you want to know about. These activities of daily living, uh, 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 dressing, eating, bathing, toileting, and transferring. Transferring means getting up out of your chair, walking across the room, sitting down. If you need regular assistance, physical assistance with at least two of these, then for mass health purposes, you are qualified to be in a nursing home and to receive mass health assistance in that nursing home. You're also qualified for some other things, and we're going to talk about those as we go along. But kind of remember that. But, the, but, but in terms of if Mary needed to go to the nursing home right now, if she needed assistance with at least two of those activities of daily living, or if she needed constant supervision, because otherwise it wouldn't be safe for her because she was going to wander, then she is eligible, if she's in a nursing home, to have mass health as long as she's financially eligible. Now, for Mary to be financially eligible, she has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. Frank, though, can own the home as long as the home has equity in it of less than $814,000. He can have cash or cash equivalent assets, that is, things like he's got, his IRA, his bank savings account, et cetera, of up to $117,240. And in addition to that, he can have infinite income. He can have infinite income. So in this situation, if Mary needed nursing home care, there really wasn't another option, they didn't feel safe anyplace else, then we would shift all assets to Frank. Frank would then take the money that is over $117,240 and he would buy an annuity with it. What is an annuity? An annuity is a contract between somebody and typically an insurance company. You give them money, in return for that they agree to give you payments, monthly payments over a term. As long as Frank is buying an annuity for a term and as long as the term is shorter than Frank's actuarial life expectancy, and to give you an example of that, if Frank were about 80 years old right now, his actuarial life expectancy would be about eight years. Um, and so as long as that purchase was for shorter than his life expectancy, then the purchase of that annuity, taking all that extra money, the money that was, that, that was over $117,240 and buying that annuity is a legitimate conversion from an asset, the money which put him over, to an income stream. And remember, Frank can have infinite income. So in this situation, if Mary needs to go to a nursing home, and that's the only option, Frank can, Frank can qualify her for mass health right away. The only other thing that Frank would then want to do, though, is he may want to change his will and change the way, and change his will, because now he owns all the assets. Chances are what his will says, and remember I mentioned at the beginning, their goal was, well, if one, so if one dies, he was, everything was going to go to the other, and then after the two of them, they were going to divide things among the kids. If that's what his will says, and Frank now dies, and Mary needs nursing home care or is in the nursing home, Mary's going to inherit everything. Oh which means Mary's going to have way more than $2,000 in countable assets. So all those, the, all those funds she inherited are all going to have to get spent down on the nursing home care. Then she'll qualify even though she still has the house, but MassHealth will then put a lien on the house to make sure that it gets repaid after she dies. Now, Frank and Mary can avoid all of that, all of that, even at the last minute. 
There's no look back periods in any of this. Frank can avoid all of that once the assets have been shifted to him by simply changing his will to say that following his death, instead of everything going to Mary individually, it's going to go in trust for Mary's benefit. He could name uh, Mary Jr. as the trustee of that trust. If he did that and then died, all the funds that he owned and the house would be protected. Mary would be the trustee. Mary could use that money and the house, actually, to provide for supplementary care for, for, for her mother. But none of those assets would have to be used to spend, uh, spent down on nursing home care. So if, if she has to go to the nursing home, that's their least favorite alternative, but it's possible and they're not going to get wiped out. The other things Frank would want to be aware of once she's in the nursing home is she, he'd want to visit her a lot and at different times of the day. It has been our experience across all nursing homes that the people who get the best care are the people who get the most visits, especially when the visit comes at different times of day so that the people in the nursing home staff never know when you're going to show up. The other thing he's going to want to do is contact the Alzheimer's Association because we've talked about the Alzheimer's Association here before. It's a national nonprofit. They, do a they give a ton of services for free. They have a 24-hour hotline. They give a lot of support services. They run support groups. He'd want to get involved with the Alzheimer's Association because they can help him go through all of this. So that's number one. What if she goes to the nursing home? Number two, what if she goes, what if she goes home? And by the way, these, we, we usually, when, when we're talking about earlier stages of dementia, we really talk about how you can spot dementia. That's not directly relevant in this case. So what happens if Mary, though, wants to stay home? Well, in that case, the first thing she wants to do, and she's probably already contacted them before, is she wants to contact Bay Path Elder Services. Now, Bay Path Elder Services is the regional entity that covers this area. Uh, each, each community in the state is covered by one of these agencies. They're called Aging Services Access Points, or ASAPs. Bay Path covers this whole area, it covers 14 towns. Within those towns, if Mary needed nursing home care, MassHealth would need to, to get a certification from Bay Path that she was medically eligible if she was going to qualify for MassHealth. In addition, if Mary is eligible for nursing home care but wants to stay home, then Bay Path also can certify that and say, you know, Mary could, needs nursing home care unless she gets a given amount of services at home. Right? And the kinds of services that she can get, whatever she needs, whether it is home care or day programs or a whole variety of services, once she is otherwise eligible for MassHealth, that, for nursing home care, then through the frail elder waiver, she can get MassHealth to pay for that. Whatever services Bay Path Elder Services says Mary needs to be at home, MassHealth will pay for as long as Mass Health, or excuse me, as long as Mary is otherwise financially eligible. Now, the eligibility in this case, same rule as you heard about for nursing homes. She has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. But as far as Frank is concerned, in that case, Frank can have unlimited assets. So the plan in that case would be very simple, and we have this all the time. We just shift everything to Frank, 